that there has within the usual yeah <laughs> that that your if you still want to have it at the the picnic shelter in that area that you would work with town staff and comply with whatever rules there are uh, uh, why, would, why would the rules be any different on the green than on the green? okay you know what I, I with all due respect we need to just move this along and if you have any questions you can talk to town staff Frank okay, the, only, the only final comment I want to make on this is the fact that we are we are really just deciding the location that is correct because, and all the objections that have been voiced so far I know, but the objections have been voiced, whether it's the parking, or the disruption, or the chaos, or the noise, or the smoke. It still exists. They don't really apply, <laughs> because we're accepting all those factors. All right. we're, it's approved by the current, the current rules. So all I want, the only thing we're objecting to is the location. And my point is, if we're, really, if we're really serious about generating revenues from the park, and having weddings and events there, then we want to maximize those. And the only place we're going to maximize those is at that location on the green, in my opinion. Otherwise, we don't have to change anything because we have rules in effect that permit functions already. So that's no change. I, if yeah, I, yeah. I would respectfully disagree that all the objections that have been expressed, you know, that everything else is the same except for the location because some of the objections I expressed have to do with that location, things about the view and the impact on the cliff walk, things that would not apply okay, to, the, to the upper the upper location. Okay. So. And, and Frank, I don't disagree with you that, that perhaps that location would be key to generating, generating significant revenues, and I'm certainly willing to explore that. I'm just not prepared to do that now. Yeah. Jim. Okay, and further on that <clears throat> is that that's part of the master plan and the work that the advisory commission is doing to determine the highest and best use for a wedding venue if, in fact, it fits. And it may be the green, it may be up uh, between the battery and the, and, the, and the field, it could be at the end of the field. There's so many options for them, but that's the work that they're doing. And that's why this is a premature request in many ways for what we ultimately have for a plan. All right, I, I Sorry, think I need, okay, Sarah, one last comment that I'm going to call this question. We need a vote. In addition to weddings, I know there's a lot of eagerness out there to do things like festivals, music festivals, et cetera, in particular, MP Altenauer, I know. And so I just would urge us to continue to press this forward and, and accept change, at least in an experimental way. And I know the advisory committee is doing all that, but I think another year for a master plan and so forth, I think we just have to kind of like do some stuff a little bit. I think we have to balance caution and planning with, you know, the Nike ad, let's just do it. So I would just urge us to continue to be yeah. open-minded for opportunities to use the park in different ways. And, and Sarah, I don't think there's anyone that disagrees with that. It's just it's being done deliberate with a lot of thought because it will affect the park for years to come. And that's why we have to do it in a deliberate way. And, and I'm with you. I'd love to do it tomorrow. And this woman that you suggest that does this planning, she's working with the advisory group on some really neat stuff. So I think there's some good things down there. Just We just have to be patient and not go put the cart before the horse. <laughs> All right, I'm going to extra, exercise my prerogative as chair and call a question, if that's could, the right term. Could we term, just but repeat the uh, motion? Yes, uh, the motion has been made, uh, I believe, and by Jessica. Jessica, could you restate your motion? Yes, I, I moved that, that uh, item 66-2011, Tucker Jordan's request for wedding reception on the green at Fort Williams be denied. And that motion did not in any way affect his permissions or application to use the picnic shelter? That's correct. Okay. And that motion was seconded? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Okay, so the motion carries four to two. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you for coming tonight, Tucker. Okay, item 67-2011, acceptance of a drainage easement. The 1175 Shore Road nominee trust has agreed to provide the town a requested drainage easement at 1175 Shore Road. The town staff recommends the drainage easement be accepted with appreciation to the trustees. Do I have a motion? I move we uh, accept 67-2011, the drainage easement of the... Um 1175 Shore Road Nominee Trust. Second.
Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Okay, thank you. The motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Item number 68-2011, the warrant for the school budget validation vote. Uh, the recommendation is the council approve the warrant for the May 10, 2011 school budget validation vote. There will also be a special election on May 10, 2011 to fill the vacancy in the Maine State Senate, resulting from the resignation of Senator Lawrence Bliss. Uh, perhaps if I may ask Deborah Lane to just uh, remind the council as to what the uh, warrant would look like. Sure. Uh, in your packet, we presented a warrant, uh, again, calling for the school budget validation referendum on Tuesday, May 10th at the high school gymnasium. State law does outline what the school budget validation referendum, the yes-no question, um, as how it should be um, listed. It's do you favor approving the town of Cape Elizabeth school budget for the upcoming school year that was adopted at the latest school budget meeting of the council? Again, that wording is by law. There's a second question I talked to um, Councillor Lennon prior to the meeting as finance chair to see um, if she wanted me to include for council consideration the following non-binding expression of opinion for the consideration of the school board and council. And again, this has been used at, at prior um, elections for the school budget. It would read, I find the school budget adopted at the April 25th, 2011 Town Council school budget meeting to be, and the choices would be too high, acceptable, and too low. So that really is the question to whether you want to include uh, that non-binding expression of opinion again on the, uh, the ballot. All right, thank you, Deborah. Uh, do I have a motion? Jessica. I move we accept uh, the uh, item 68, 2011, the warrant for a school budget validation vote in its entirety. Seconded. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any questions or discussion? And this is the same format as you explained, Deborah, that we've used the last, uh, every year we've done this. Uh, okay. Except the acceptable. acceptable. Yeah, the, there was slightly different wording on the non-binding question the first year, I think. Yeah. This, is, this was from the... This is from last, last year. Last year, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? It carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 69-2011, uh, it is recommended that the council authorize a quit claim deed to the estate of Virginia Wheeland. All taxes, fees, et cetera, have been paid in full. Do we have a motion? Uh, Ann. I move that the council authorizes a quit claim deed to the estate of Virginia Wheeland. Second. Thank you. The motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 70-2011, Riverside Cemetery Trustees 2011 Work Plan. Uh, we've received a work plan, and it is recommended that the council acknowledge receipt of that work plan. Sarah. I move the council acknowledge receipt of the work plan for the Riverside Cemetery Trustees. Second. Any discussion? Mike. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that as part of this work plan, they're working on updating the 1993 master plan, and uh, uh, Frank Ovenali attended the meeting and really want to express appreciation to Frank for working with them uh, on that issue. It's an interesting group. Now and into the future. <laughs> <It's Okay>. future. <laughs> <laughs> Until you live there. Not up the hook yet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Motion's been made and seconded, I believe. Yep. Yeah, okay. All those in favor of the motion? All right, Darius, thank you. Uh, this is the second opportunity before we go into an executive session for citizens to discuss items that are not on the agenda. Seeing none, uh, uh, we move then to item number 71-2011. Uh, the recommendation here is that in conformance with Title I of the Maine Revised Statutes, Section 405, 6, C, and F, we enter into executive session to discuss land acquisition disposition issues and to review an application for an abatement of taxes due to hardship. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion. The motion carries. Uh, before we leave, I just want to 
briefly point out that our next town council meeting will be April 25th, at which time we'll have the public hearing on the proposed budgets. Um, so do we go off here? Yeah. Okay. Not be returning. Yeah, we will not be returning to televised meeting. We will come out after the executive session concludes. Thank you. What's the topics on this one?